Hello everyone and welcome back to J1 Aviation. So today is day four of our emergency series and today we're talking about engine failure after takeoff with no runway remaining. So let me know if you are four or four. So, okay, this engine failure is about the worst one. You are out of runway to safely land. You don't have enough altitude to really even do much. You are low, you're slow. You don't hardly have any time to even think of a plan. All you have to do is just react at this point. So what should your reaction be? So let's be honest. If you have an engine failure after takeoff, say 300 feet, you have one job. Do not stall the airplane. If you stall at 300 feet, your chances of surviving will drop about as fast as your vertical speed indicator. However, if you push the nose down, keep the airplane flying and land under control at minimum air speed, your odds of surviving are decent, right? Studies have shown that bodies can survive a momentary 9G deceleration and these little training aircraft, you know, touching down at your minimum speed, you only need about 10 feet of ground roll before deceleration is 9G or less. So similar to yesterday, engine failure with runway remaining, you need to pitch down immediately and keep the airplane flying. Secondly, you need to aim for your place to land. So at 300 feet, you are basically on short final for your landing site. You'll be on the ground in like 10 seconds, so don't look too far away. Now for the landing site, we're talking only looking left or right about 30 degrees. For troubleshooting, because you'll be on the ground so quick, you don't really have much time to troubleshoot. You know, with one hand as you're flying you can like confirm a couple little things right is the mixture full rich you know is the fuel pump on is the primer in you can do some little things like that but there's no no time to be grabbing checklists or doing anything like that your focus needs to be on flying the plane and getting it to the ground if you have time you can communicate matey 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 on whatever frequency you're on just to alert anybody who's listening of your situation now one thing that can really hurt people here is the average time it takes people to react when they recognize that there's a problem, right? So studies have shown it takes like three or four seconds for a person to realize there's a problem and then react. But if I'm climbing out at VX or VY, I pull the power to idle and hold that pitch attitude for three or four seconds, right? The stall warning horn is going to quickly be going off. So that's how quick you need to react, right? Energy management is very important right here. You don't have much altitude. Really your only friend at this point is your remaining airspeed. So admittedly, when you're close to the ground, it's gonna be tough to push the nose down to meet the ground. In fact, many scenarios of this happening tend to show that pilots actually pull back at this time as they're getting close to the ground, right? Because it's coming up on them. But of course, this leaves like no chance for the wings to keep flying and then a stall happens, right? And then the worst case scenario unfolds. So a few comments on picking a landing site. So a good rule of thumb is if you're down low like this, you're right, don't turn more than 10% of your altitude. So at 300 feet, don't turn more than 30 degrees. At 500 feet, don't turn more than 50 degrees. Now at some point above 500, right, that rule kind of breaks down and doesn't apply anymore, but it's not a bad rule of thumb. So part of the reason for this rule is the more you turn, the more total energy you're going to lose, right? You're not gonna be able to glide as far because of that horizontal component of lift is taking away that vertical component of lift. Now, because of the low altitude in this scenario, it's great if you are already, if you already know where you're going to divert, right? So if it's your home airport, you're probably familiar with the surrounding terrain off the ends of the runway and where the potential landing spots are. But if it's an unfamiliar airport, you know, the satellite overlay on your iPad or your favorite app for flight, whatever, can show you the best places, right, to divert to. So this can be really helpful, right, because knowing this allows you to react immediately instead of spending even one or two seconds trying to decide where to go, right? Every second is very important here. So as this is a quick review for an engine failure at very low altitudes, right, push the nose forward, don't stall. Head towards your predetermined landing site, checklist mem memory items, right, by feel, call on the radio if you have time. <laughs> so there you go. Day four, engine failure down low, say 300 feet or so. Thanks everyone for joining us on this journey. We'll catch you on day five tomorrow.